streams. That makes, that makes me happier than it should. What's up guys? Welcome back to another day of the month of maybes. So we're actually going to pick up the RV and it is actually getting towed today. We had an issue with it yesterday trying to get it towed, but we're getting it towed today. I don't think I've given you guys a proper cold start on the R35. I want to start this thing up for you guys. Let me know what you think. But uh, we're gonna go pick up some stuff. So, almost to uh, the army base. It's actually right there, the military base. I think the RV is technically like right there. So we just gotta get in the base driver for the, the semi or whatever should pretty much be getting there about the same time as me and hopefully we don't have to wait around for kind of a couple hours like we had to yesterday hopefully this thing goes quick so today is already going a lot smoother we have the big uh, rv towing semi looking thing right there got all my visitor registration my pass all approved so that i could actually go inside follow the guy in hopefully not get lost and uh that'll be it Following this guy through the gate, hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't take too long or have to like search it or do anything crazy like that. We are in, so that's good. Another couple minutes and then we'll be at the RV and probably take him a little while. I think we got to disconnect the drive shaft and do some stuff like that. But I think we're, uh, I think it's working. Here it is. This is I'm the proud new owner of this 2000 Monaco La Paloma or whatever you want to call it. Now we got the guy backing up over here. Try to get it all hooked up. So we are here with Cody, he is the owner of, uh, what do you call this thing? Uh, Cosnetti, Larry La Palma. Yep. How long have you had this thing? Three years. Three years? Three years. And then so in the three years, how much work have you done to it? Uh, new transmission, new tires, just cleaned up the interior, just basic maintenance stuff. Little RV stuff. So they yeah. use this thing a lot to like tow their boat, jet skis, stuff like that. Recently, he parked it here like three months ago and then the fuel pump went out. Three months ago and now it won't start. So. Yep. And he doesn't want to work on it here, deal with any of that. He has a bunch of other stuff that he does. Works on stuff for a living. Basically yeah. said, screw this thing. He went back and forth uh, from basically Colorado to Washington Col in it a Colorado couple times. Colorado to Washington, North Idaho. So it's been just cruising back and forth. Probably put about 5,000 miles on it since I bought it. It's time for something different. Yeah. So he actually just bought another RV or like a tow behind to tow behind your truck. You guys know I like projects. So we're basically going to take this home, put a fuel pump in it, and then go to the racetrack with it. It's kind of the all backed up I really like this is the third time I've done this so or actually the fourth technically <laughs> so walking up in the interior so cranked this thing over the other day and I got it started on starting fluid we have the receipts for what is that three thousand dollars or is that five thousand it was five thousand because I had them do the work five thousand for the transmission and eighteen hundred dollars for the tires this is the v10 it has eighty thousand miles on it it has two slides so basically this is a big slide right here for basically the living room right here. And then there's actually a slide in the back for the bedroom. So that all uh, kind of comes right here. We got the bathroom, all that stuff. So like decent condition overall. You know, we got the sink, we got all that stuff. I was showing Jamie. She was like, are we actually gonna use this one? Cause we bought that class A, the diesel pusher a long time ago. A lot of you guys have asked about that, like where it went. Basically it sat on the side of the shop for like two or three years. I never really wanted to do anything with it. I needed an in-frame rebuild. Just needed too much work for what I wanted to put in it. And uh, so basically we sold it. And then I bought another one last year. That one was uh, had like an old school 454 and stuff in it. And it was just a little bit older. Couldn't tow anything with it. Whereas this one is actually a little bit bigger. It has a, what do they call that the class five hitch? whatever you call it, uh, basically has a hitch on the back, actually has a V10, and should get probably, how many miles a gallon did it get? Got about four. Four? Well, you said five yesterday. Okay, five. Somewhere in there. Five, five, six if the wind's not blowing. It's definitely gonna be an interesting thing, but I'm pretty stoked about it. So I guess I gotta hand you some money now before this guy gets this thing hooked up. The title's right there. I guess we'll, we'll do the deal.
that makes, that makes me happier than it should to have bought that silly RV. But we got it. We got it. Everybody's out on their bikes today. I'm just out ripping the, the getter, cruising by my RV. That's me right there, boys. All right, boys, well, she's here. I only beat it by like 20, 30 minutes. That's not too bad, I guess. Here she is, we're gonna hook up the drive shaft. So that way we can hook up a little bit of a fuel system to get it uh, moving around the property a little bit. Oops. So now that this thing is officially mine and uh, at the shop, I'm gonna hop in it and uh, I guess crank it over. Show you guys uh, what we're working with right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this doghouse right here. So under there, we're gonna find that uh, Ford B10, which is a 6.8 liter and it gets, I guess, like four miles a gallon. So this thing is based off of, or it is basically a Ford F53 chassis, which Essentially, they sell these things as like a, a running and driving like frame to these companies that then put their own body or coach on top of it. You know, that's why pretty much everything looks looks like you're driving like an F-250 or like a van or something like an E-350 or something like that. Uh, so what you do is you just go and you put your key in here. You go to auxiliary start and then I think that uses the coach batteries, but I think I actually need to enable the coach batteries. That ain't going to work. So I actually just went ahead and hooked up a jumper pack to it. So we'll go ahead and uh, stick the key in here. Hear everything come to life. So you can see it says low, well, it says basically it's full of fuel. I don't know what, what all that noise is. It has all that stuff. Um, you can see we have the backup camera. I don't know what that's actually doing right now. We got a stereo. Something's making noise down there. It had probably a little bit of starting fluid left over in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of starting fluid in it and get it to fire up. A little bit of starting fluid right there. Uh oh. Well, I ran out of battery, I guess. Start the generator. So the generator is running. Now we have the auxiliary over here. So you hit auxiliary start. And I'm pretty sure that will give us. So the engine sounds great. Let's see if we can do that again. something. There she is. That is running pretty good. See, I'm just hitting it with some uh, starting foot, so we did need to and we needed to like drive it like into the shop we could probably just use the starting fluid to drive it around and back into the shop radio works so we have that in the back i guess we could go show you guys a little bit of the floor plan around here it's got nice uh you know solid wood the ceiling doesn't have any water spots or anything like that it has two ac units so it has an ac unit right here and then it has AC unit in the back. Obviously microwave, it has like almost a full size uh, refrigerator right here. So that's in uh, you know pretty good size. Got a stove, oven, all that stuff. Honestly, everything's in pretty good shape. It was meant for more of like older people, I guess, or people without kids, I should say. Uh, but yeah, we have the slide right here. So you can see 
basically that that whole side right there just all opens up it's always interesting when you see the slide opening up like that i guess this chair normally goes like right there and then you just kind of have this for like two people uh, depending on what we end up doing with this thing it would be kind of cool to have like a bunkhouse in here uh, obviously i have two kids you know we have a bunch of friends and stuff that will probably end up going to the track or doing some other stuff with us but this whole thing right here is a complete slide as well where's the slide for it i think it might be is it right here i wonder if it needs like a uh, if it needs something to do that because i just hit out and then uh, i wonder if there's like a lock on it because this this slide was out when uh, when I initially went there to uh, to take a look at it, so I don't know what uh, what exactly happened, but that's it's trying to move, but I, I don't know if there's like a lock on them. We'll have to see if there is something like that. That would be interesting. I'm pretty stoked on it. It's got a decent size uh, bathroom, obviously toilet and all that stuff, but a stand up shower. I think it looks like it used to have like a mirror or something in here, but then they have this kind of so you could extend it, give yourself a little bit more room. I could totally uh, I could totally see myself in this thing. So pretty cool. One of the first things that like I thought was like, oh, it'd be cool to swap like a diesel or something in it. But I don't think we're gonna do that. I think just, you know, it already has the V10 in place. It works, the, all this stuff works. I think overall it'd be better to just leave that. But like, let's say if I were to buy one of these things that was blown up, it would be kind of cool to swap like a Cummins or honestly the best thing to do would be put like a six, seven uh, power stroke in it. And it would probably end up fitting or you might have to cut a little bit out a little bit out of here but yeah big ov10 or i guess these things are kind of dogs going up uh hills and stuff when you're like going through the mountains what would be kind of cool is to put like a little twin turbo system on it there's plenty of room underneath the coach to where you could do like some low mount turbos like on the bottom of the exhaust manifolds wouldn't have to flip anything and just run an intercooler up front that would be kind of cool it would be interesting to have this thing on even on like five pounds of boost would help this thing out tremendously uh, going up the side of a hill or something like that. That may be an option for the future. Uh, that might be kind of cool to have like a turbo V10 motorhome. Obviously not making a bunch of power, but basically just to kind of help it help it along. If you guys are stoked about the month of maybes and the month of daily uploads in May, hit that like button. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think about this thing. It does have a tow hitch on the back, so we are planning on basically towing my enclosed trailer to events and taking the family and taking the friends and all that stuff. The kids could hang out in here and draw and color and play you know we'll be able to do stuff with the track everybody will be nice and comfortable so i'm pretty stoked about it appreciate you guys watching see you in the next one